So our next question is, how do we find the equilibrium points of the lac operon equation? Well, we know we have to set x prime equals 0, which means 0 equals a plus x squared over 1 plus x squared minus rx. That's our solution for the equilibrium points. And now we have a problem. Notice, for example, that x equals 0 is not an equilibrium point of this system. When x equals 0, this term is equal to a, and this term is equal to 0. So x prime is not equal to 0 at x equals 0. So x equals 0 is not an equilibrium point of this system. And now the question is, how do we find these equilibrium points? How do we solve this equation for x? So here's a bad idea. <laughs> bad idea is multiply this out. Multiply both sides by 1 plus x squared. That's still 0. And now we have a 1 plus x squared product over here. That's going to give us a cubic term, an x cubed term. And that's nasty and ugly, and we definitely do not want to solve a cubic equation. But there's a much better way, and that is to solve it graphically. Here, the blue curve is the positive part, the increasing part. And what does Rx look like? Because what we're going to do is we're going to say, what is the graph of this? And then what is the graph of this? And then find when these two are equal. That is, when this minus this is 0, these two are equal. So we're going to find that by looking to see where these two curves cross. So the blue sigmoid is the first term. And Rx is, of course, the equation of a straight line. So there is the straight line, which is the negative term. Here is the blue sigmoid, which is the positive term. And those two curves intersect three times, right here. So just graphically, we can say, which is not surprising because we just said it's a cubic. And we know that a cubic equation has three solutions. We just have no idea how to find them other than by nasty algebra, very nasty algebra. Um, but we solve it graphically, and those, there are the three equilibrium points. And I'm going to call them low, medium, and high. And this is, of course, the x-axis. And now the question is, are they stable? These are three equilibrium points. Are they stable or unstable? That, in this case, can be answered by a very simple kind of inspection. We gave it the rough name, the method of over and under, which will help you remember it. But here's what it's saying. Let's look at this low equilibrium point. The blue is positive. The pink is negative. So to the left of the low equilibrium point, the blue is above the red, or the pink. Blue above pink means positive greater than negative. And so the vector field here is positive. The to the right of the low equilibrium point, the pink is above the blue. So the negative is greater than the positive. So the sum of them is negative. And that's also going to be the case all the way over here to the medium equilibrium point. But at the medium equilibrium point, on the right-hand side of the medium equilibrium point, the blue is above the pink. So the positive is bigger than the negative. And that's going to be true throughout this whole interval here. 
until you hit the high equilibrium point. And at the high equilibrium point to the right of the high equilibrium point, now the pink is greater than the blue, the negative is greater than the positive, and so the vector field is going to be negative. And let's draw that out. Here is zero, here is low, here is medium, and here is high. And we have just said that the low is stable, the medium is unstable, and the high is stable. S, U, S. This is a biological switch. So that's the Lac-Operon differential equation and the structure of the biological switch. Notice the properties that this system has due to this configuration. Number one, the low equilibrium point, this stable one here, is not zero. We mentioned that. So there's always a little bit on hand even when there's no lactose present. That's good because we need to keep a little on hand. Now here's the second feature. Suppose you have a tiny amount of lactose. Let's say this much. What's going to happen with the system? And the answer is, because the low equilibrium is stable, the system is going to go to the low equilibrium point, And it's going to sit there. In fact, if lactose increases even to that point, or even to this point, this is still in the basin of the stable, low stable equilibrium point. And so all of these lactose concentrations are going to produce the stable equilibrium point. And that's important because this is telling us that there is no, so, so to speak, runaway excitation, as it's called. In other words, what you don't want is for a molecule or two to come in, and then the system to start reacting, making more repeat, making more lactose permease, which makes more, which makes more. That's called runaway excitation. And it's a characteristic of an unstable equilibrium point, that the tiniest perturbation off it puts you to another situation. That's an unstable equilibrium point that's not here. You don't want runaway excitation. You want the system to not get too excited when there's just a little bit of lactose present. However, when the lactose concentration passes this, and let's use the biological term, passes this threshold, now the unstable equilibrium point, which is the threshold, is now going to come into play. You're on the right-hand side of the unstable equilibrium point. That means you're going to go to the high equilibrium. And now you have ramped up production of lactose permease because there is a significant amount of lactose present. So notice that we have defined two critical biological words. The word switch, which is stable, unstable, stable. And the word threshold, which is defined as the unstable equilibrium point between the two stable ones. So this is a nice example, first of all, of the big picture in terms of how does E. coli govern and how does it ramp up its lactose permease con, uh, production. And it gives us nice definitions, rigorous definitions, of words that biologists frequently use. 